Hello, this video is going to be about lasso and ridge and how we use them in R to solve classification problem, problems. Um, so we will be working on the same data set where uh, we were looking into uh, which person is going to try lasagna um, and depending on the information that we have on that person, um, we ran it across um, across logistics regression and then we were able to put together a classification uh, model and we saw that our training data was showing us 40 84 percent accuracy and our test data was about uh, 80 percent accuracy uh, let's go ahead and import the same data set um, and make sure that change the name of this data frame to my my data and hit import so as you can see, uh, this is the same data set that I use for logistics regression. We are trying to ultimately uh, classify um, or predict uh, people's outcome, whether they tried the lasagna or not, based on these independent variables, okay? Um, all right, so um, if you watch previous video, uh, you you realize that you know these are the same ch uh, code chunk that I used to identify the categorical uh, information, independent variables and dependent variables. So I will just go ahead and execute these these lines. Okay, um, it's very just fine. Now we can see that in my data I do have factor variables uh, for the pay, pay type. For gender, I do this. Do you have the same um, factor um, variable? Live alone or not? Live all type. Those are all categorical now, and as well as my um, dependent variable have tried. Okay. So um, so far, it is the same preparation that we had with the logistics regression. Um, now let's split. A data into test data and training data. Okay, um, let's do the same thing and let's hit comment and enter. I do have my training data and test data split into two. Now I do have 80% of my data dedicated to training data set and 20% goes to test set. Um, so when it comes to uh, the specific function in R, uh, it's just called GLMNet. And that's the, well, actually a library that we are going to be using uh, to construct lasso and ridge regression. Um, and one important uh, thing about those uh, that package uh, is you have to uh, transform your categorical independent variables uh, through a process called one-hot encoding, okay? It has to go through uh, another uh, processing step so that GLM that can work on building lasso and ridge regressions. So what we do with, with this data set is going to, I'm going to show you the results of what is going to happen to these uh, pay type, gender, live alone, dwell type, and neighborhood categorical information that I already identified above as a categorical variable. Um, and you will realize that it's going to create additional columns uh, into the string set and the data set uh, based on my uh, categorical information in my original data set. This is called um, one hot encoding and it is literally going to create um, multiple different columns for, um, for, for, for an independent variable that has more than two categories um, for example, if you have uh, three or four or five categories in your independent variable, this method is going to create um, the number of columns or number of categories minus one. For example, if you had like five categories in a specific independent variable, by going through this procedure, it's going to be creating four dummy columns into your um, into your uh, data set. All right. So I only handpicked. Uh, pay type, gender, uh, live alone, dwell type, and neighborhood, because those are my uh, only categorical information in my data set. And I am entering this in model.metrics in our file, which is going to create me um, one hot code encoding 
one hot encoding process um, and it's going to make these independent variables go through that process and reallocate um, or recreate the columns that I will require them. Um, I'm going to create them against my have tried have, tri have tried column in the data, in the tree data set. That's why I use this tilde operation here, and I am going to drop whatever just developed by this function. I'm going to drop the first column out of it. The first column is going to be the intercept. It's going to be feeling like a like a linear model. It's going to be creating a column for the intercept, but I don't want it. Uh, and it's going to be, this operation is going to be making sure that I, I'm dropping it. This may have sound so sophisticated, but it is not really. So let's run this to see what this stream factors um, data frame is going to look like, okay? So if you look into the stream factors, um, you see that, for example, pay type salary uh, is created here and pay type, um, there was another pay type early. It wasn't created because there was only two categories, right? Um, and then gender similarly just had uh, gender male, live alone, it just picked up the yes. Um, and uh, well to type, now it picked up two categories from dwell type because remember we had three categories, three minus one is two. This did the job correctly, it created two categories for me. And for neighborhood, it did the same thing. In my neighborhood category, I had only two categories, sorry, three categories. Now it is generating two dummy columns. Um, and then it is taking actually the south, south and the west, it's incorporating south and the west uh, neighborhoods in my, um, in my uh, newly created um, one hot code encoded um, data set. And it is leaving out the east neighborhood out of the out of the um, data set because it is called a reference um, column. Okay, so you pretty much see what you know this has done. Um, I do have now one dummy, um, one dummy column for my categorical variables. Uh, what is missing here is my numerical uh, independent variables like age, like um, income level, like car value, credit card debt. Remember number of visits to the mall. Now it is my time to merge these two data sets together, right? And I do use as dot metrics, and then I do use the data frame creation function, and I do call the three factors that I just created. So this is going to be merging all these columns that I just showed you with the numerical columns in the train data set, okay? So if you uh, execute this line, and you will be creating train X, right? If you click on train X now, you do have all the categorical information as well as your numerical information, uh, but pay attention. You do not have have tried column here. The dependent variable is not included here. So you have to um, you know, uh, have it um, in a different way, all right? So um, we did this for actually for the training data set. Now let's do it for the test data set as well. Um, okay, so this is a, basically the same thing, but working on the test data set. Okay, uh, we created the task factors and then ultimately the independent variables that I will be using for my testing data. Okay, it is going to be stored in test X. So I'll be using train X and test X in my Elastro and Rich um, regression classification models, okay? In the next video, I'm going to show you how GLMNet is going to be used to create last regression models.